Hey, for I shall yet open up dimensions over you. I shall cause new things. They have never been before. You have never seen them before. I shall cause new things. I shall cause new structures. I shall cause a new heaven and earth. I shall cause a new manifestation. I shall cause a new revelation. I shall cause a new structure to come upon the earth. I shall move upon you. And you shall see new structures. And you shall see new worlds. And you will see new Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Wherever you are online, the Spirit of the Lord is moving upon you and upon your household right now. The Spirit of the Lord is moving upon the atmosphere right now. Hallelujah. For God is doing something incredibly new in your life now. God is moving in your situation now. Not the same way you've thought about it, but he's doing something original, something new, something you've never seen before. It's coming and it's moving in the mighty rushing wind is coming into your life now. That healing is coming. Is coming on the streams of the heavens. Is coming on the wings of the cherub. Is coming. Like the silver dew upon the wings of the dove. It's coming into your life. Hallelujah. Let's just honor the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and from the Son. Let's honor the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right there, right there, right there. Right there, right there. I hear the immediate healing of two wombs, two wombs in this room. I hear an immediate healing. I hear the Holy Spirit. There's an immediate healing of two wombs in this room right now. Glory. In the name of Jesus. I hear the healing. Of nerves and veins in somebody's body right now. I hear the healing of someone's left eye has been giving trouble right now in the name of Jesus. Your left eye. It's a number of people. So it's not like about three people I can see. Your left eye has been giving you trouble. In fact, it looks like it's getting worse. There's healing right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. 
right now. There's somebody listening to me online right now. You had prostrate problem and they told you it was gone. So you went back to the doctor and they said it's coming back. God says to tell you that that's not his word. That his word to your body is complete healing. That that prostrate cancer will not kill you. You will live to an old age. In fact, you will live to be 90 something. God is present. The Holy Spirit is speaking. is good. God is good. God is good. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. There are people in this room and people online who in the year and a half are going to have best-selling works writing. It's going to be touching people around the world. People online. Hallelujah. There's a minister that's listening to me. You're wondering if you should just give up. This is what I hear. Is that your ministry is not over. What God's doing is changing your trajectory. He's going to put you in a position where you stand before businessmen. And you stand before businesswomen. What you thought was your ministry was just a training ground. And right now, God is opening a new trajectory. And it's going to be easier than the past 12 years. You're about to enter a new season. God is good. Somebody in this audience, both physically and on the net, is going to start a water company that makes water, that infuses health into body. It's going to start locally but it's going to become a global phenomenon. You're about to receive an idea on how to create a kind of water that deals quickly with cell problems. The Lord is good. This is Pentecost. Growth. Someone who's listening to me plus someone in this room. One walk that you're producing in this season, you're doing an artwork now, not did yesterday, right now, that is being imbued by the power of God to become an art that changes your life. 
the Lord. Come on, give your clap offering to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Holy Spirit, I want to thank God for all of you before I even speak. Everybody who knows Roger Davis, please pray for Roger. Roger's father passed this week. You know, Roger Davis, uh, we're praying for you, Roger. We love you. We're praying for your family. You can just pray for people who are not feeling well. Uh, please keep the office appraised. We're looking for volunteers to man the office, to come to the office and do stuff, the church office. If you're retired and you're looking for something to do for the kingdom, we've got an office space. We've got work to do in the church to help the pastor in administrating what's going on in the church. Amen? So give, give us a couple of days of the week. If we have four people giving us a couple of days or a few hours a week, a lot of the work. Where the load will be easier on the pastor. Amen? So I'm making that call, asking, especially those of you who are retired, those of you who are not, who may be doing a business that gives you a little bit of space, come to the office and help. You know, we're going to build this place back up, all right? Amen? So all people who travel to our Luminal Foundation course, it's amazing that you're here. It was incredible. That's what I say. I think it was good. I don't know who the teacher was, but I think he was good. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is marvelous. And we thank the pastor. Like I said yesterday, yesterday we thank the pastor. We thank the elders of the church for having this place open so people from around the world can come and just fellowship and study together. It's an incredible gift. And we don't want to take it for granted. We thank God for it. Amen? We had someone from Australia that came. Yes. Please stand up. Let's see you. Stand up us from Australia. So, Sister from Australia, we, have, we had someone from England. He's the, he's, the, he's, the, he's the African Eskimo. He lives in an igloo. igloo. No. He's way out in the cold place in England, Newcastle. I, don't know, I didn't know people who had houses there. So, but people from all over the country, Nevada, you know, of course, Got people from New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Alabama, Virginia, Oklahoma, uh, Wally Johnson. Amen. And the guy with the two river name, Jordan Jordan. <coughs> and my daughter from Colorado and all of them, see, and Northern California. Man, what goodness. It's awesome. And people from all over the state thank all of you and all of you who helped. So, but let's just, let's do the message quickly. Here's the message. It's three very simple points, okay? The day of Pentecost, okay, was the day that the law was given. Right? And in the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, you ready for this? The world, by receiving the law on Mount Sinai, which is the word of God, written by God, the Bible says that the mountain quaked and fire came down. Came down so much that children of Israel had to say, uh -uh. We, don't, we don't really ever want to talk to you. We want to talk to Moses. <laughs> See, Moses is scary, but he's not that scary. Okay? So we're going to talk to Moses. Right? 
So you know, if we talk to you, we're going to die. But, but some of the guys, some of the rabbis say the reason is because in their estimation and the coming of the word, the coming down of God, the whole universe was saying, we have to run away from this face that's coming down. The universe wanted to recalibrate itself. The universe wanted to change back to what it was when it didn't have to deal with the burden of human weakness, sickness, when, there was, when the world was in God. The universe wanted to return to its origination. At Pentecost, but they, 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 for some reason, they didn't get the fact that God was not really coming to destroy the world. It's true. Fire was coming down. God was coming to make a tabernacle among his people. So God said, okay, you're not ready. I will keep coming upon you by the Spirit. So I'll go. Moses talked to them. Yeah, but let's be really honest. Israel did us a favor. Because <laughs> if they had done what at that time, you wouldn't be here. It did the world a favor. Right? So, Pentecost is a symbolism of God wanted to do what? Tabernacle among God's people. That's, that's the Hebrew Testament. Right? New Testament. Uh, the Testament of Jesus. You know, the Testament of Jesus, which is Testament of those who walk in the way. Tells us the story of the apostles going up to the upper room, waiting, praying. Jesus told them to wait until the promise comes. So they go up and they start praying. So we learn what God was trying to do on Mount Sinai. God was not coming to live in the mountain. God was making God's way into the body of Israel. You all right? So, literally, God was coming. God being the spirit was coming to live in Israel. But he got scared. I don't know. Jesus told him, wait. So we know that on the day of Pentecost that a mighty, actually the Bible does not say mighty rushing, it says a violent wind. And the only way to understand the violent wind is to understand what happened in Sinai. We always read the Bible as if the New Testament or the Testament of Jesus is different completely from the Hebrew Testament. But if you read it in light of Sinai, you know that this is God coming again as spirit. So which means that the coming of the spirit that came as a mighty, we, we like the word mighty Russian wind, but a violent wind. The same way, by the way, that Sinai was responding to God is the same way the world was responding in spite of the fact that people didn't see it. It was a mighty rushing wind that came there. So, violently reconfiguring the atmosphere. This is what God does. God has a strange way of dealing with us. In order to deal with us, often, God will reconfigure our environment. Think about it. Because God's thing with us is always to create an atmosphere in which both our body and our soul is ready to receive. Right? So the mighty rushing wind was to recalibrate the atmosphere. 
when God came on Mount Sinai, what he was doing was recalibrating the atmosphere so that Israel can receive him into themselves. Mighty rushing wind is not the Holy Spirit. It's the force that opens up the atmosphere or is the effect of the coming of God. So round number two. When the mighty rushing wind came, Bible then says that there was flames of fire. Those of you in the class understand. The flame is not the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that that flame is the Holy Spirit. So the flame came upon them. So there's one, the preparation of the atmosphere. Number two, the sitting of the fire of God on their head. And actually the Bible, some translations say stuff like, it was what? The, something sat on them with a divided tongue of flame. So sat on them, right? Then it says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they said, one, there was a violent wind setting the atmosphere right. What happened today? When the atmosphere is set right, then the fire sits. When the fire sits, then the Holy Spirit comes. Follow the pattern, we now see that the Holy Spirit needs an atmosphere. The Holy Spirit needs the divine flame in order to show the Holy Spirit's effect. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You okay? But then you begin to see the effect of the coming of the Holy Spirit. So the atmosphere must be prepared. The body must receive the fire of God. The re the big one, some of the biggest problem we have is we don't allow the atmosphere to be changed. We like the comfort of a non-agitated atmosphere. But sometimes what is necessary for the fire to come is for the atmosphere to become completely messed up. I don't do that. You know, the, the atmosphere is just too noisy for me, too chaotic for me. But what if that chaotic movement is the violent response of the atmosphere to a power that it cannot handle? Changes the atmosphere. You know, that, according to some writers, the Mount Sinai, the stones were beginning to melt. So, the, 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 if, I, if I may be alchemical in my, in my talk, the coming of the wind, all the whole structure is to move the universe to elemental malleability. The wind, the fire. To move both the atmosphere and man to a lamental malleability. They can receive things into itself without resistance. Holy Spirit came on them. Came, came on them. Now the fire came and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now when you feel something 
there is bound to be an overflow. Right? We know that there was the wind, there was the fire. According to Elijah's story, the narrative of Elijah, there was the violent wind, but God was not in it. There was the fire, but God was not in it. A tendency to confuse the violence with the move of God. But he says that that was just the precursor for the what? Being filled with the Spirit. And when they were filled with the Spirit, the first thing that happened to them, one, is that they began to talk strangely. The language was not the ordinary language. As the Bible says, they began to speak a language that did not exist. So, a new linguistic construct. It's important. But the linguistic construct was a language, number one, that was inclusive of all languages. So they developed a language that was inclusive of languages, which means that the communicative cadence of their being could be understood by everyone. So guess what? And here's the, here's the, here's the catch. The Bible says, the people said, we all hear them in our own languages. So they had a language, but everyone understood it in their own languages. So, when the Holy Spirit comes, it creates a language that even the dumbest person, pay your definition of what dumb is, because sometimes the dumb is the smartest, but anyway, we'll leave that alone. Wait, 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 wait that, that, that even the most simple person can distill that language into their own language. One. So, it's a language that is all-inclusive, yet distillable to your little quirk. So, now you're hearing it according to your linguistic pattern. So, even if the person shouts and you are somebody who communicates in quietness, you will hear the word in quiet. If it is the Holy Ghost, you will hear it. And if you are listening to the Holy Ghost, you will hear it according to your own pattern. That's why you can sit in a room and I can preach and then you go out thinking I was talking about an elephant and the other guy think I was talking about the python and the other guy thinks I was talking about a goat, the goat that is supposed to be sacrificed. But everyone takes that language and it becomes meaningful in the structure of their being. The one thing that the Holy Spirit does is to take one communicative strand and make it applicable to variety of circumstances and make it what specific to variety of linguistic and neural constructs. So when I preach the gospel. And this is what people who, don't, who, don't, who, who are not been preachers don't understand. They say, oh, well, the way you're preaching, your preaching is too harsh. But yet somebody in that room leaves the place saying, thank God, I was so blessed. It's you. You got to understand how, what, 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 is in the, what is in your linguistic construct that's making you hear the word this, that way. I said, so that's number one. Number two is when the Holy Spirit comes. I would just say, when the Holy Spirit comes, not only does it create a linguistic what? A linguistic, linguistic inclusion. It's not about inclusive language. 
It's about a spiritual language. Now you come and tell me now, do you were preaching about inclusive language. Now you should say they, them, him, do, who, whoever. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the language that grasps the depth of your being, that when you hear it, that language speaks directly to your immediate need. So, but when the church speaks from the spirit, it reaches everyone. When the church speaks from mere geographic and tribal context, it speaks to no one. So, but it's not, so what happened? When, this, when, when, when the Holy Spirit came, not only did it create linguistic inclusivity, it cut across cultural demarcations. The fact that somebody was a Parthian and Parthians were destructive had nothing to do with it. The fact that the Cretans, <laughs> I always laugh when I read that Cretans, when I, when I, the fact that the Cretans were there, the Arabs were there, the fact that the Arabs were marauders and were doing stuff in those days didn't have anything to do with this. That linguistic inclusion cut across what? Cut across cultural demarcations and barriers. You all right? So when the Holy Spirit comes and it fills us, it produces a kind of interconnectivity that really overlooks our cultural and ethnic differences. Which is why I do not believe that the church in America is filled with the Holy Spirit. I did say it. Because we have churches where the Holy Spirit finds it difficult to cut across linguistic differences, cultural differences, gender differences. So we, we, we understand that the linguistic stuff works. The Holy Spirit can do that. But when we actually operate in the Holy Spirit, it will cut across those things. Remember, one of the places says, so, 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 when the Holy Spirit comes, we all drink from the same spirit. We all drink from the same spirit. Okay? So much so that the Bible says that in Jesus Christ there is neither Greek nor Jew. Neither male nor female. It's not a non-binary stuff. In Christ, there is neither male nor female because the Holy Spirit reaches everyone what? in who they are. Then he says, there, now there's something about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit flows, when we actually feel the Holy Spirit and it flows out, it cuts across socioeconomic levels. The Holy Spirit has no what? No economic favorite. So which means that the Holy Spirit in the presence of God is the great equalizer. Because God is not going to give you more spirit because you have more money. It cannot be bought. Go check with Simon Magus who tried to buy it. You can buy it. Now, so, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, everyone heard the wonderful work of God. They heard it in their cultural context, but it's the same message. It was not a specific message to Arabs. Okay, you Arabs, let's give you a specific message. Okay, you white people, 
got a message to tell you how wonderful you are and how superior to everybody else. You black people who are going to give you a message to victimize you, to keep letting you know that you're a victim no matter what happens. I didn't say that. Forget it. And you Mexicans, mm, we're going to find a message for you. This is not what the Holy Spirit brings message what? And distills it. And opens this stuff up. And we are hearing the wonderful work of God in our linguistic and what? Psychostructural patterns. Finally, when the Holy Spirit comes, it gives gifts according to the what? The divine purpose in your life. It's amazing. The Holy Spirit is very specific. So Holy Spirit, even though it gives inclusive linguistic structures, it gives you the, uh, brings a, a structure that cuts across cultural and identity demarcations. Right? Yet, in the same place, the Holy Spirit knows what it is you need to do what you need to do in life. It's amazing. So it gives you wisdom. The funny thing is, it doesn't say it gives everybody wisdom. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. He said to, to one, he gives wisdom. To the other one, <laughs> to the other one he gives what? healing to the other one he gives a word of knowledge to the other one that's a gift now we must make a distinction between the general pouring of the spirit that allows you to at least have a wisdom to live your life right but this is not wisdom of going and finding out Making sure you don't walk in the back of the alley when nobody's there in the middle of the night. That's called common sense. But wisdom that allows you to operate at a higher level to fulfill your destiny, but is very specific to purpose. Very specific to purpose. So the Holy Ghost knows how to take that thing which is general and say, hey, you. This is your purpose. Can I, can I say this without getting in trouble? When the Holy Ghost gives you a gift, God never takes it back. But the Holy Ghost can actually change it, giving the changing structure of your purpose in life. And there's some people who get stuck in the gift that the Holy Spirit gave them that was supposed to be used in a season of their life. Now they are stuck because they don't know what to do because they think that, and they're trying to use to put a what? To put a, a round peg in a square hole. Holy Ghost going, yeah, I gave you that gift, but it was very specific to the purpose of your season. That's why it's not working right now. okay so here's the thing about the when the holy spirit is present there's a linguistic cadence that comes into your life and then there's something else that happens it is possible that god will give you a language that that bypasses your biases How, how did God do it? Because there were Arabs, Parthians, Cretans, I like the word. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Phrygians, Libyans, <laughs> Libyans, even Libyans were in the Bible. See? For you Americans, Libyans were in the Bible. <laughs> Egyptians. People from different places. That stuff cut across all of that stuff and they all could hear the word of God. The 
the coming of the Holy Ghost. I like it because I'm a Pentecostal Methodist. I'm a spirit-filled Methodist, so I like it. So, we say the Spirit, they got filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's what we teach. They got filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But tongues is not the only evidence. The capacity to cut across barriers is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. It's not just tongues. The tongues is, a, is a amazing because the Holy Ghost gives it to you as a way of bypassing your junk. So you can pray around your junk. <laughs> Come on. You can pray around the clutter of your mind. You have a language that even nature can understand and recalibrate itself according to your purpose. I'm done. So let's let the Holy Ghost have his way. Amen? If you're still saying, I can't deal with Asian people, maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost. Sorry. If you're sitting with your pussies and you're talking about how terrible white people are, I do too. Maybe, you, maybe you're not as open to the Holy Spirit as you think. If you're sitting around talking about black people and talking about South American people, talking about Jews, orange Jews, <laughs> carrot Jews. So if you're talking about all these people in the way that is not a flow of drawing people into a relational connectivity with divinity. Maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost. This thing, sorry, Holy Ghost, this being called the Holy Ghost also empowers you to be a cross-boundary Cross cross dresser, cross boundary. Let me say it again cross boundary witness. Maybe one day we'll talk about it. Let's stand up.